Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. In this video, what I'm hoping to do is help you walk through a parallel RLC circuit using the current method. Okay, so I'm going to break it down into three simple steps in order to achieve this. And hopefully at the end, we end up with a line current and a respective phase angle for that as well. Okay, so first thing I'll point out, we are dealing with a parallel circuit. So the first thing we know about each one of these loads connected into this circuit is that we do also have 120 volts across each one and 120 volts across here as well. Now, the first thing that we need to determine in order to move forward is we need to determine what each branch impedance is. Okay. Now, if we look at our branches, we have a resistive load which has 10 ohms of resistance. Now, resistive loads your impedance is always going to be equal to your resistance. So in this load, we've already found our impedance. We know it's 10 ohms, okay? Our inductive branch here, what we have is a branch with an inductor that has 20 ohms of impedance. So we have the impedance right off the bat, but we also understand that this is at a 0.866 lag, which means this is not a pure coil. This is a coil that has both in-phase and out-of-phase components, okay? So if we were to ask, if we were asked um, to find the impedance based off of just a resistance and a power factor, we could use Pythagorean or we could use um, a, an impedance triangle for this branch alone to solve for that. Uh, or if we were given a value of inductance, we could take that value of inductance and convert it to inductive reactance and also apply it again to an impedance triangle for this branch to solve for total impedance. But we need to know the determ we need to know the branch impedance of each one of these in order to determine the second step. The second step is going to be determine branch individual currents. Okay, but before we can do that, we've got this capacitive value here that I need to convert over into an ohmic value of capacitive reactance. So we're going to take our capacitive reactance formula, Xc is equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc. Okay, and we're going to turn it into an ohmic value. We know that we have 60 hertz. And we know that we have 176.838 microfarads of capacitance. So we're going to take our 2 times pi times 60 hertz times, and there's two ways to do this. We can move the decimal place. Micro means times 10 to the power of negative 6. So we could say 176.838 times 10 to the power of negative 6. Or we could just move the decimal place and say 0. 0.000. 176838. Both of those would give us the farad value, which if I'm trying to solve for ohms, I need to work with farads, not microfarads. Once we punch those numbers in, we should end up with a value of capacitive reactance around 15 ohms. And again, this is a capacitor, so we know that the value of impedance of this branch is going to be equal to the value of capacitive reactance. So we have the impedance of our resistive load, which is equal to our resistance. We have the impedance of our coil, which is 20 ohms, but it's at a 0.86 lag, okay? And we have a value of 15 ohms in our capacitor. So now that we have our values of impedance in each branch, we can use Ohm's law to determine what the values of current are through each branch, okay? So I know I have 120 volts and 10 ohms, which means I'm going to see switch to a different color here. I should see 12 amps through this branch. Okay. Uh, if I look down here, I have 120 volts and 20 ohms. I should see 6 amps through this branch. And 120 volts and 15 ohms, I should see 8 amps through my capacitive branch. Now, this is an RLC circuit. If they were all values of resistance, I could simply add up these branches because they're all in phase with each other. Similarly, if I had all inductors that were all at the same angle or the same power factor, I could add those values of current or capacitive. I could add those. But because we have three different components that are, especially these two and these two, are out of phase with each other, I cannot add those branch currents together. What we're going to do is break this into an HV chart. But before we do that, I just want to quickly plot these on the Cartesian plane, not to scale, just to kind of take a look at to see what happens here. Okay, so because it's a parallel circuit, what we know about parallel circuits is the same voltage is applied everywhere. So we're going to use voltage 
as our reference in this case. We know we have our 120 volts as our reference, okay? My resistive load, one thing I know about resistive loads is current is in phase with voltage. So we're just gonna quickly plot that on here. We're gonna say here's our 12 amps. We're gonna say there's our 12 amps right there. And we know that it's at zero degrees because it's in phase with our voltage, okay? We're gonna move to our capacitor. We'll deal with our inductor last. But one thing we know about capacitors is that the current leads the voltage in a capacitor by 90 degrees. So if my voltage is here at zero, that means that the current through my capacitor must be ahead of my voltage by 90 degrees, which puts it at 90 degrees, positive 90 degrees. So we're gonna say there's our eight amps at 90 degrees. There's our capacitive current right there. Now we're gonna deal with our inductive current. We know that we have six amps. And what this power factor tells me is if I arc coast that power factor, if I take that 0.866, and I convert it into a phase angle. This, it works out to be 30 degrees. What that tells me is that the current of my inductor is lagging my voltage by 30 degrees, okay? All inductors have lagging current. So we know that if it's lagging by 30, what that tells me is that this six amps is actually 30 degrees behind its voltage, which actually puts it at 330 degrees. And if we draw it on here, we should see our six amps, something like that. There's our six amps and we're saying it's at 330 degrees. Okay, and again, I cannot add these values together unless I do it vectorially. So I'm gonna break it into a horizontal vertical chart so that we can determine our line current uh, based off our horizontal vertical chart. Okay, so we're gonna start with the current through our resistor is 12 amps at zero degrees. Okay, and we're gonna put next, this is Pretty. I'm just going to rewrite that so you can see it on there, hopefully. There we go. And we're going to put in our 6 amps, so the current through our inductor, 6 amps, at what we've determined is 330 degrees. Okay, and we have the current of our capacitor is 8 amps at 90 degrees. Now that I have all of these phasers, I can break them up into an HV chart to solve for current total. Okay, I'm gonna apply my cos function to my horizontal and the sine function to my vertical. So if I take my 12 amps times the cos of zero, I should see 12 amps. And if I take my 12 amps times the sine of zero, I should see zero amps, which makes sense. This is all horizontal component right here, okay, or in phase component. If I look at my inductor and do the exact same thing, six amps times 330 degrees should give me an in phase value of 5.196 amps. And if I take six amps times the sine of 330, it should give me an out of phase component of negative three amps, and it's imperative that we remember that negative, okay? Similarly, our capacitor, eight amps times the cos of 90, we should see zero here. Eight amps times the sine of 90, we should see eight amps here, okay? So all we're gonna do with our horizontal vertical chart, I have components that are in phase with each other, and all of these components are out of phase with each other. I can't add these phasers straight up, but what I can do is add all of their horizontal components up, and all of their vertical components up to get a total horizontal and a total vertical. So we run the numbers, 12 amps plus 5.196, we should see 17.196 amps is our total horizontal component or our total in phase current in this circuit, okay? We add up our vertical components, I'm gonna respect those polarities, negative three plus eight should give me a positive five amps. Now what that tells me when I'm thinking about my Cartesian plane, if I have two positive coordinates, I know that I'm going to be positive horizontal and positive vertical. Okay, that tells me that whenever I find my phase angle, I'm just going to add that number to zero and that will be the location of my current total as well. Okay, so we're not there yet. We're gonna apply Pythagorean's theorem because if I have a total horizontal and a total vertical, 
I can figure out what my hypotenuse is or what my resultant phasor is. So in this case, 17.196 squared plus 5 amps squared should give me a resultant phasor or a current total in this case of 17.908 amps at, and now we're going to figure out the angle, okay? I'm going to apply the cos function to this because cos function is already your power factor, so I'm not going to waste time with the sine or the tan or anything. If I'm going to need to find power factor um, as well as phase angle, I'm just going to use cos. It's one quick step, okay? So in order to find our cos, we're going to move it up here. I know that cos is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And in this case, if I'm focusing on my angle right here, my horizontal becomes my adjacent. So in this case, 17.196 divided by my hypotenuse, which we solved to be 17.908. Okay. This is going to spit me out the actual ratio. Okay, of, we should see, around 0.96. Okay, that's our power factor. Now, we can actually apply the lead to this power factor because we know that we have both positive values here, which means our resultant current should be leading our supply voltage here. Okay, so we can actually call that a 0.96 leading power factor. And if I arc coast that number, it will give me the phase angle of my circuit, my, my current with respect to my voltage. We should see at about 16.211 degrees, okay? Which again tells me that my line current in this circuit is going to be leading my supply voltage by 16.211 degrees, okay? So join me in the next video. I will run through the exact same circuit. Instead of applying the current method, what I will do is break it into um, the power method and we'll solve it that way. We should end up with the exact same answer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.